Um, and just, it has features that, that other sites don't have. Uh, real, like I said, live, live real-time data is key. You know, the images update so often that it's, you're not getting an image that's, you know, days or, or weeks old. It's, it's, it's real live time data that we can use at that moment. There's altimetry. Um, altimetry is, uh, using the same technology that your state trooper uses with his radar gun. He's shooting a radar beam at you and uh, measuring your distance and calculating your speed. The satellites are doing the same thing. They, they shoot a, a radar beam and bounce it off of the uh, surface of the ocean. And they put the wave heights to an algorithm and uh, they develop a contour chart every day of the surface height of the ocean. So each horizontal line of latitude is uh, one degree or 60 nautical miles. Each isobar of uh, altitude is five centimeters or about two inches. And so they're measuring these very, very subtle differentials. I can't even tell you a two inch differential across the room. And they're doing it off 60, 100 or more miles. Somebody somewhere somehow figured out, hey, I'm catching more fish over here in these, uh, these dark blue or these, these depressions, and I'm not catching so many over here in, the, uh, in these bulges. So um, the, this solid line here, this is your mean sea level. This is zero. This is positive five, positive 10 centimeters. This is negative five, negative 10 centimeters, negative 15 down here. So again, we see the loop current down here is the big bulge. There's the cyclone that we were looking at on the currents. This is a big counterclockwise eddy. Um, we like to see this drift further in. Um, this is not so great when you're getting into the yellows and oranges. Um, this is a downwelling zone. Um, and what we found over the years, uh, when we first launched the site, we first uh, <clears throat> were saying, hey, avoid these, uh, these downwelling areas at all cost, which I still maintain that as I don't care what the other imageries are showing. I'm not going down here in the middle of the loop current. I'll fish along the edges of it. This is where your intensity is, where your isobars stack up tightly like this is where you want it. that's where the push is going to be and that's where your action is going to be and it can even extend somewhat into uh, the positives up to say 15 or positive 15 or so uh, it's current and that's really what we're looking for uh, you just want to avoid these areas in the center of the current where it's, it's just devoid of, of nutrients um, that being said the, the big uh, assumption on this imagery is that these are free-flowing open ocean currents. And uh, the big kink in the works on that concept is the existence of all these deep water rigs, uh, the, the spars, the semi-submersibles, the drill ships. These are all located out in, you know, three, four, five, ten thousand foot of water. And... Uh, the bait, uh, these are fish attractors, bait attractors, and um, when the altimetry changes, the bait is no longer free-flowing with the currents. It's staying within the refuge of the structure. And so uh, we've gotten a lot of reports over the years that, hey, I was over here at this rig, I was in some bad altimetry, but we caught some good tuna and some marlin even. And... Um, that's because the bait didn't leave, so the predators didn't leave. So when you're fishing in open water rip, you better be paying attention to this imagery. It's very pertinent, it's very, it's very good. Uh, if you're fishing the rigs, not so much. I wouldn't pay so much attention to the altimetry. I would be looking at other parameters such as your current and your water color and uh, maybe looking for some rips, but if you're, if you're rig fishing, I wouldn't worry too much about the altimetry. I've got some friends of mine that got small boats and they, they don't have, 
they don't have the capability of running 150 miles, much less 240 one direction. And um, they've used it and they'll call me and say, man, thanks, you know, and, and uh, that put me to where I didn't have to just go looking. I've started out where Hilton's told me and, you know, with even with the smaller boats, they, they can go and start fishing productive waters instead of fishing so-so waters and having to look for something that's more productive because a lot of people don't have time to do that. You know, um, I know back before Hilton's and and all of the other companies that were doing this, before we would go fish a tournament, it was word of mouth. And then we had a guy that used to fly in a single engine plane, and he had an old VHS recorder, and he would fly by himself a lot of times, and he would be flying, and he would lean over and film weed lines and stuff. This was before oil rigs and all that. We didn't even know what altimetry was back then. We were just looking for clean water and for uh, current lines. And before we left the dock, he would come around. He would have GPS coordinates and stuff wrote down. And that's how we got our information years ago. This has helped tremendously. Uh, the other thing, if you get a subscription to Hilton's, <clears throat> let's say you were planning on going fishing and fishing Friday and Saturday or Saturday and Sunday, you can pull it up and you can kind of see the trend of where the water's at and which direction the water's moving. So if you wind up having some cloud cover Friday evening, you were gonna leave and go fishing Saturday morning, you can look back and see if the water was moving south or east or whatever. And then you can kind of figure, well, I need to be another 20 miles to the east or 20 miles to the west or 10 miles south and you know you start out 10 miles south of where it was the day before and if you're in good water you can work your way back north and you can find what you're looking for.